Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories, new cases of COVID-19 are being captured from a wider range of communities as three additional cases are recorded. The Ministry of Education orders all schools to remain closed for a further two weeks. And a St. Lucian startup that introduces medical tags to the Caribbean market makes it to the international scene. The Ministry of Health received confirmation this morning, Thursday, October 22, 2020, of three confirmed cases of COVID-19. This brings the total number of cases diagnosed to date in country to 42. Case number 40 is a 42-year-old male from the Miku district. Case number 41 is a 29-year-old female from Castries. And case number 42 is a 58-year-old female from the Babano district. More from the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. All cases presented at community respiratory clinics with respiratory symptoms and were tested and placed in quarantine pending their results. Upon receiving their results, they've been transferred to the respiratory hospital for care. This brings to 15 the total number of confirmed cases currently isolated for care. All 15 cases are currently in care and doing well. During this week, it has been noted that the new cases are being captured from a wider range of communities nationally, pointing to the existence of community spread of COVID-19. If you are experiencing respiratory symptoms which include a cough, sore throat, fever, we appeal to you to promptly seek care at the closest respiratory clinic. Anyone experiencing these symptoms should not be within the workplace or involved in social activities. As COVID-19 cases come closer to our homes, our communities, workplaces, and social circles, we should realize that we are all at risk of contracting the virus. It is important that we each take all of the measures to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. The Ministry of Health reminds every citizen of the importance of consistently practicing infection prevention and control measures. Ensuring that a mask is used when in public, to follow floor markers or spaces to maintain the recommended physical distance where floor markers are not available as a guide, use a separation from the next person as two arms lengths apart. Also, to wash and sanitize your hands often throughout the day. Remember, if you're experiencing flu-like symptoms, seek care at the closest respiratory clinic. The five respiratory clinics remain open for anyone experiencing symptoms such as fever, cough, sore throat. The Groselet Polyclinic and the Denry Hospital are open on Saturday and Sunday from 8 to 4 to ensure access to care during the weekend. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. Minister for Education Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert has issued a statement on the status of schools amid the increasing cases of COVID 19. Dr. Rigobert has informed that, as determined by the Chief Medical Officer, there is indeed community spread of the coronavirus, and as such, the decision has been taken that all learning institutions shall remain closed for a further two weeks. The proposed date for the reopening of school is now. Monday, November 9th, 2020. The minister says, given that the situation is still so fluid, there is the possibility that the date may change. Students, teachers, and parents are to continue with the multifaceted mode of learning and teaching, employing both traditional methods and learning online during this period. Parents are encouraged to ensure that children remain at home as part of combating the spread of the coronavirus and to avoid mass crowd gatherings. The Pan American Health Organization says in the English-speaking Caribbean, most new COVID-19 cases are related to non-essential international travel. Grenada, for instance, reported its first new COVID-19 case in three months, coinciding with the reopening of its borders. PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne says the resurgence underscores that fighting this pandemic is not a one-time effort. It requires a sustained response even in places where transmission is down. Dr. Etienne has called on countries to remain in control of the virus while they await the arrival of a safe and effective vaccine. Today we have a pipeline of, of more than 180 vaccine candidates under study with 11 in phase three clinical trials, and several of them, including 
volunteers in our region. While the world urgently awaits a breakthrough, it is important to highlight that PAHO will only support the distribution of a vaccine that has proven to be safe and effective in clinical trials reviewed by national regulatory authorities and recommended by the World Health Organizations. Vaccines are designed and manufactured with safety in mind. This process is supervised by regulators and followed closely by the scientific community. The PAHO director has assured that the organization will ensure equitable access to a vaccine by every country. And that's why PAHO has been engaged in the COVAX facility. So countries across our region will have equitable access to a vaccine as soon as it becomes available. COVAX will be the best viable option that countries will have to access COVID-19 vaccines in the short term. That's why over 182 countries and economies around the world have joined this initiative. We're also happy to report that virtually every country in Latin America and the Caribbean has joined or is in the process of joining the facility. PAHO has been supporting countries to navigate what can be very often complicated legal and budgetary steps needed to secure their participation in this in innovative global partnerships. Dr. Etienne revealed that PAHO is collaborating with financial institutions like the Inter-American Development Bank to support countries in our region access the funding needed to purchase vaccines through the COVAX facility when they are available. PAHO is also collaborating with the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, and the European Union to provide financial support for the down payment required by the COVAX facility for Caribbean countries to join. 11 countries will be covered by this agreement. This will help to ensure that the Caribbean people, especially the most vulnerable, can benefit from a safe, effective COVID-19 vaccine. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne. In the meantime, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the need for quality statistics to track the status of the pandemic and its economic and social impact. Michelle Nurse reports on the CARICOM Secretary General's statement on the World Statistics Day. In a statement to Mark Caribbean Statistics Day on the 15th of October, the Secretary General points out that in the efforts to manage and overcome the pandemic, epidemiological data underpin the information based on the spread of the virus. The Secretariat's Regional Statistics Program has been compiling weekly statistical bulletins tracking the pandemic in the region. The bulletins provide information on the pattern of the disease, the total number of confirmed cases, new cases and deaths for each country and the total for CARICOM. The CARICOM Secretariat joined with the rest of the region in observing Caribbean Statistics Day as well as World Statistics Day on the 20th of October. The observances were held under the theme connecting the world with data we can trust. We caught up with two members of the CARICOM Secretariat Statistics Unit and they spoke of how their work in statistics impacts the region. Countries are first and foremost focused on the performance of their economies. So economic statistics provides a picture, not just for, for those economies, but for the region as a whole, as it relates to how we are performing economically. Um, and we know once once our countries are performing well economically, it can then lead to, you know, spill-off effects or spill-off benefits for other areas, uh, which I might not be, you know, too uh, integrally involved in. But, uh, but that's just to recognize the importance of, of first and foremost, economic statistics uh, for the region. Usually when we say, uh, and I think I want to delve into another aspect of statistics, when we usually talk about statistics, people just think about the numbers being 
but there's there's an aspect of statistics that is often overlooked, which is the the methodology behind those numbers, right? Um, we need to ensure, um, and this also forms a, a, a critical part uh, of my work. We need to ensure that countries are adopting the right methodology in the production of their numbers. So a big part of my work is to ensure that um, capacity within member states is of uh, is of the, uh, the the right standard, um, such that uh, we're fairly comfortable that member states are employing the right methodologies in their different economic areas. Now the the 2020 population housing census is upon us. Um, some member states should have actually started um, their censuses, but due to COVID, um, those were postponed. Um, so basically, what we in the Secretariat do with, with regards to the population housing census, the Secretariat has been coordinating the regional censuses from since 1980. Um, and uh, each round, which is every 10 years, the, the support the member states grows. Um, for this particular round, which is during the 2020 round, we have, in collaboration with member states, of course, developed a regional census strategy we have developed a common census questionnaire. Um, common census questionnaire, basically in terms of structure, member states are allowed to amend the questions to their national needs. That report ending there by Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time. And just to note, we will be having statistics officials in studio tomorrow for the edition of The Morning Brew, 23rd October 2020. A St. Lucian business startup that introduces medical tags to the Caribbean market in response to COVID-19 represents at the Entrepreneurship World Cup EWC 2020 finals. Gilland Averill, founder of Engage, competed with 99 other finalists from around the world at the MISC Global Forum event of from the 18th to the 20th of October 2020. Averill was selected as the EWC Global Finalist after winning the local leg of the pitch competition. We have a report on the recent recognition ceremony held at the GIS studios. Gilland Averill is the 2020 champion of Entrepreneurship World Cup EWC St. Lucia. In a recognition ceremony, Averill was awarded U.S. $850,000 worth of services from global partners of EWC for his pitch to introduce Meditags or medical tags to the Caribbean market in response to COVID-19. This is the latest venture under his company, Engage. Averill believes that his award-winning project was fated. I had a, uh, I have a medical condition, a heart condition, and I felt that, you know what, I need to bring this to light because I started a project with the ministry, well, as I initiated a conversation with the ministry, and COVID-19 stopped that. So I was like, how do I now reinitiate that conversation with the ministry in midst of COVID-19? So I said, Michelle contacted me. I was like, oh, Michelle, do I really want to take part in a competition? And I think two days before the end, I actually submitted my project. And lo and behold, I actually won the competition. And through Invest Lucia, partner of Invest Lucia, actually opened the doors. The same thing that I wanted to have done that I could not have gotten a meeting of the CMO and her team through Invest Lucia and winning this competition that allowed me to do this. Averill, St. Lucia's 2020 EWC champion, was also given the opportunity to compete with 99 other champions from around the world in the global finals at the MISC Global Forum held virtually this year from the 18th to the 20th of October 2020. Entrepreneurship World Cup country director Michelle Samuel explained the journey to competing at the international level. St. Lucians who have the dream of sharing the global stage with other phenomenal and change-making companies must first go through screening, round one, the preliminaries, and finally the national finals in order to get that chance. After making it to the national finals, the winner will participate in EWC Accelerate 2 and can be selected as one of the EWC Top 100 who will then compete at the global finals in Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, as a result of COVID, the global finals will now take place online, which means we can all witness it and be part of it. This summer, EWC St. Lucia received 104 applications for the local leg of the competition. 
The top nine finalists were also recognized at the ceremony. Judges present, OECS Business Development Officer Quasi Roberts and entrepreneur Danelle Florius offered congratulations and words of encouragement to the winner and other finalists. I want to offer special congratulations to the winners. I think um, you did yourselves proud, um, did your families proud. Uh, we would like that this fire that is started to burn in St. Lucia um, with with what Michelle is doing here and supported by Invest St. Lucia and so to continue um, to, to spread throughout the region. And I just want to encourage all of the entrepreneurs because being an entrepreneur myself, I know how tough it is, especially in a market in St. Lucia and the Caribbean as a whole. It's not easy to grow a business, especially a tech-based business. And I'd also just like to employ you guys to never give up because that is what is going to make you successful. The EWC is pegged as one of the world's largest and most diverse pitch competitions and support programs for the next generation of entrepreneurs globally with 175,000 entrants applying from 200 countries. From the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the Anti and Nouvelle Aquial. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Novella Quayol with Primus Hutchinson. Merci, Otta, Jesse. Merci, Madame Department, qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement de cette GIS et télévision nationale pays à NTN, car vous êtes au Nouvelle à Quayol, pour cette au Primus Hutchinson. Chef officier médical Dr. Sharon Belma George annoncé jeudi qui s'est laissé enregistrer trois cas neufs de maladie corona. Sa mené limo a monté en total de 40 car limo 40 c'est un homme qui a l'âge de 40 de l'année au village Miku et car limo 41 c'est une femme avec neuf l'année de l'âge haut castri et car limo 42 c'est une femme 58 l'année de l'âge de Barbono. Toutes ces cas-là, selon le docteur Belma George, ont été trouvés testés et sont en quarantaine, côté ces résultats qui ont été affectés et présentement à l'hôpital Victoria. Ça peut être le mot au monde qui a reçu un traitement à l'hôpital Victoria pour 15. Le ministère de la Santé a avancé à enregistrer un cas de maladie coronavirus. Le 
21 en mois d'octobre 2020, ça a été 39, et depuis là, il y a un homme 36 ans de l'âge, il y a un homme qui a trouvé un test de l'exercice pour découvrir un monde qui a perdu le contact et puis c'est ce qu'il a trouvé avant, mais c'est ce qu'il a trouvé avant. Les officiers du département de santé publique ont trouvé un exercice là, qui, comme un homme là, a été une pièce de contact et puis les autres. C'est l'individu qui a trouvé des tests positifs et ni non plus, il peut partir voyager en pièce l'autre pays. Chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, notez aussi que tout ces cas-là, qui ont fait assez bien et qui ont pas ni brisé ou qui passent qui critique pour ces semaines qui passent, les mots cas de maladie corona a augmenté et quand exercice ça là a continué, possibilité à qu'a existé pour y découvrir plus cas. Dr. Belma George, vous remarquez qui il a apprécié de la coopération avec les communes et les officiers de santé, avec la qualité de la santé, pour faire des officiers de santé pour faire bataille contre les mauvais maladies. Encore encore, comme on a dit, pour ce moment, il y a un appel pour tout le monde, pour que tout le monde soit en public, pour que tout le monde soit en public, pour que tout le monde soit en public, pour que tout le monde soit en place de business, pour que tout le monde soit en place de business, et si vous avez appris, vous pouvez trouver une maladie floue, allez au docteur immédiatement. Corporation de l'assurance nationale, c'est le CIS, c'est NIC. Bah, l'assurance, là, qui, tout citoyen qui était qualifié pour recevoir un paiement en bas, programme de soulagement économique, là, trouver un paiement à 20 ans, il était supposé faire, là, t'es passé. Malgré ça, NIC, juste toujours, qu'à cette information, on les employés, c'est l'individu qui peut retrouver le paiement en résultat de la situation. Il y a aussi qu'à remercier tous les employés qui ont déjà posté des informations qui ont mérité à ce qu'on travaille. En ce 1495 employés, il y a aussi 256 employés qui peuvent posté des informations à ce qu'on travaille. Il y a aussi qu'il y a aussi qu'il y a aussi qu'il y a aussi qu'il y a aussi pour faciliter le paiement des travailleurs qui peuvent recevoir l'assistance. Un effort pour assurer que tout applicant qui est qualifié de trouver le paiement, et là, ici, il a encore fait un grand appel pour tous les employés qui peuvent encore poursuivre ces informations qui sont nécessaires à ce code de travail pour faire ça le plus vite que possible. Et là, ici, il a fait un appel si vous avez besoin d'assistance, vous avez téléphoné 457-6019. Et le dernier jour pour voir ces informations, c'est le 31 octobre 2020. Pour ce travail qui a aspé pour le paiement, parce que vous connaissez toutes ces informations qui sont nécessaires pour trouver le paiement. Et ainsi que vous savez que ce paiement est fait immédiatement après ces employés pour toutes les informations entre Depuis le 20 octobre 2020, et ainsi j'ai fait 68 904 paiements pour 8 853 applicants en total de 64 861 000. 978 et 85 dollars. Le département CDF, c'est la Fondation des Affaires de Développement Culture, en collaboration avec l'ambassade Taïwan, de tient une cérémonie en cette culture là, jeudi bon matin, pour présenter puis pour les participants de la compétition l'entente. En observance de la journée nationale des pays Taïwan, c'était le plus bon en mois d'octobre, j'ai observé ça. Le gouvernement de Taïwan a demandé cette liste pour te produire ces lettres là même quand il a fait un observant journée nationale cette liste en mois de décembre. Mais tout ça, c'est le temps de pour ça qu'a monté l'histoire de collaboration entre des pays. L'ambassadeur Peter Chen a très plaisir et puis dégoué la production de ces lettres là et promettre pour présenter à ce média social pour le public là en divers pays côté les résidents de Taïwan qui habitent pour décider qui laisse en eux plus similaire. Ambassadeur Chen dit que ce participant qui a ce participant qui a qui a trouvé un cadeau. Le ministre des Affaires Culture, le Fortune Belle Rose, aussi tout est plein et puis des gros pour que la production soit là et des gros travail qui a fait pour entretenir les relations entre celles ci et Taïwan. L'année passée, nous avons changé. Nous avons vu une délégation de Taïwan. Une délégation qui a été née et puis l'honorable Janine Giroudi McIntyre, qui est la personne de la CDF. Il est venu et qui parle, et puis c'est Taïwanais pour le National Day. Il a fait 
um, lantern competition pass um, a, a, a Taiwan lantern siya go by aussi. Ek lantern competition sa hodia kamu tuenu manye um, relation ye um, epi Taiwan epi Saint Lucie. Um, ek kamu tuenu depe ya ek um, manye nuni logay pul yon alot um, ek manye um, yuha edenu um, kwa tipe i um, uh, uh, karibla. Ek so pusa nuble really women seo pour pour tout ça you have by cette ici et tout ça you can continue um pour faire um un um, bonou en parmi ces participants qui gagnent c'est que Peter 3e place Perry Marshall 2e place et uh, Gillian Avril 1e place aussi que Peter gagnent après uh, pour la temps public la té plus similaire ouais et que uh, tous ces ces participants aussi trouver prix uh, 700 900 avec 1000 dollars. Et moi, c'est madame, ça se côté, nous, à trois bouts de nouvelles, là, pour aujourd'hui. Moi, quand même, c'est autant pour qu'à garder. Moi, quand vite au bouger, puis moi, encore, c'est dire, quand ça fait la vie, d'un gars, il peut se trouver l'autre nouvelle. À quoi, il y a présent? Moi, quand vite au bouger, Jesse. Merci, Appeal Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming.